Hello, we're back again. We've been away um, back down to Brighton and Dorset for a festival and actually it was Bimble Bandada Festival. Now most of you might know Bimble as the solar panel experts and um, providers but down on the south coast we know them as the festival givers and it was a very good festival. I'll show you a couple of shots of it. In the meantime, uh, just before we went to the festival, we had turned around and come down to Sorby, which was just as well, because while we were at the festival, we got a notification to say that the Rochdale Canal was now shut till further notice. So thank God we did that. And um, we're just hanging around down here for a bit because tomorrow our friend Makiko is coming and we're back up to Hebden Bridge for something that's going on up there, which I'll show you later and um, in the meantime we're going to take a trip out somewhere else. Today, while we make for Makiko to come to Hebden Bridge tomorrow, we've decided to visit somewhere that you might recognise from a television programme that's been on recently, which I loved, and I suddenly realised that we were moored just a couple of miles from it. So we've got on the bus today and we're just about to arrive. It is of course Shibden Hall where Anne Lister lived and they knew so much about her and her life because of these diaries that she kept. And the writing is tiny and a lot of it's in code because of her sexuality, but somebody's managed to do the research and translate it. Upstairs, they had her bedroom and in the middle of the picture there, you can see the ropes used to tighten the mattress. And that's where the expression, night, night, sleep tight comes from. Around the back of the house they have a folk museum with all sorts of setups. They had the Crispin Inn and this is how a pub would have looked like a few hundred years ago. Men only of course. And they had um, somewhere that made wheels, they had a basket weavers, they would have had potters and of course this is the apothecary with all sorts of wonderful and poisonous things. This was their actual carriage. And then on the way back to the boat we had a quick stop at the Peace Hall where they have these wonderful doors which were manufactured in Glasgow. we're moored in Sorby Bridge for a day or two I'm taking the opportunity to do a little bit of touching up 
um, when we were on our way up here in the very short locks I got the bow of the boat the nose stuck under a bit of wood on a lock gate and uh, before we could pull it back it had scraped a huge chunk of paint off and I try and keep on top of that um, because I don't want it to get rusty and I want it to keep looking nice so this is my kit for touching up I've got latex gloves for stopping getting in a mess I invariably forget to put them on um, and then I've got these great brushes from WH Smith tiny heads and I particularly like this very flat headed one which is great for straight lines I keep the old wooden forks from takeaways great for stirring paint and this is the best thing these tiny pots from cream teas and that sort of thing are really good for keeping in your bits of paint I've got primer in there mixed two to one with Oatrol oil and that's my zinc phosphate primer and that's a bit of brush cleaner between coats I sand down with some very fine 600 sandpaper and then dust off with a rag and of course because the boat is all stripy masking tape so I can keep within the lines and the great thing about these is they'll keep the paint fresh for quite a while I don't know how long but I've had them in there for weeks before now and it means you haven't got to have the lid of the paint in opened um, making it all oxidize so there we go that's where the damage was done to the front of the boat and I've sanded it down with the electric sander right back to bare metal on the worst parts and I've put on one coat of two coats sorry of primer and so far one coat of undercoat and I'm going to put two maybe three of undercoat on and once you've done that it doesn't matter if you have to wait a while before you put the top coat on because that will protect it from the rain Don't fall in I dreamt about falling in last night. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing a good job. <laughs> well, today we're trying to sort out a bit of a mess that we got into. So all of this is Miss Canthus briquettes that we uh, use for our fire and for our barbecue. But we had a bit of an accident with them. So I'm going to get Henny to tell you what happened. So H, what happened? Well, I was down in the um, hold a little while ago to notice one or two runs of water. There's a shelf in here and there's one or two runs of water in there. But oh, that's not very good. Must have splashed in somehow. And um, I continued to look and I could see that there was more than a few drops of water. There was loads of it and it got all over our miscanthus uh, bricks and turned them to mush like half to hold it suddenly become full of what's in those bags over there and I think what had caused it well I'm pretty sure I know what caused it was loads of water getting in the reason it got in was because I had the anchor which we have to have when we're going down rivers obviously the rope was already round the front, um, what do you call that thing, bollard, probably not bollard but I call it bollard, and um, the anchor was down in the hold nicely out of the way, which of course meant that the rope at some point had to come out from underneath the, um, the cover, so that was fine, it also meant that the cover wasn't entirely closed properly. We went through some locks on the way to here and they were only just long enough for us to fit in and we had to do that diagonal thing a little bit but at some points there was more than one lock and it was chucking water in like it was Niagara Falls all over the top of this of course what we didn't know then was that loads of that water was splashing and going underneath the cover and down into the hold all over our um, precious bricks so I've taken probably, it's taken me probably six, seven days working down there to get it all out because it had all just turned to mush 
and I couldn't get in there very easily. So I even had to go and buy a little trail to do it. And today is the very first day that I can actually say I can now see the bottom of the boat at the front and it looks gorgeous. <laughs> So the Miscanthus blew up to about three times its normal size once it got damp and it broke down into this um, sort of powdery consistency. So the, the only good thing that's come out of it is we've tried it as cover for our compost loo and it works brilliantly. It's better than cat litter and you don't need so much of it. So we've now got about six uh, bin bags full of it, which will last us for a couple of years at least. So at least it won't go to waste. But next time we're going to keep all of our paper sacks in plastic bags. Off to Hebden Bridge and we meet up with some steampunk friends from Brig House a few weeks ago. Off to Hebden Bridge for their big festival. There was some very interesting dancing going on. I have literally no idea. So now we're on our way home and the plan is to leapfrog all the places that we didn't stop at or leapfrog the places we did stop at on the way up here so that we're always stopping somewhere different except for our favourite places uh, this being one of them this is uh, on the Cauldron Hebel it's an offside mooring you might have seen it when we were on the way up it has a barbecue set up over there nobody can get to it from the road and it's really private and lovely. Not a lot of solar, but apart from that, it's a perfect mooring spot. The locals know about it. And so if there's anybody out there who thinks they might like to moor up here, just direct message me and I'll give you a what three words. Um, apart from that, there's lots of places we want to visit on the way back that we didn't see on the way up. Places that you you heard about Berkhamstead, Newark upon Trent, but you can't tell what they're like till you get there. And both those places and lots of others look lovely. So we're going back um, to visit all those places on the way because we can't do the loop. It'll be like doing the loop. So that's our plan. When you have the OS map app on your phone, this is the sort of place you end up when you go walking off the canal after dinner. Hi Makiko! You'd never find these places without a map yeah. of some sort. Go on Minzo. Sorry? Oh, yeah. Okay. Is that all tree planting? Uh, this is, yeah. We're just trying to get back before it gets completely dark and then we have to walk by the light of our phones. So we found ourselves back down to the valley floor over the river, the very low river. Just about made the sunset. And now we can go and see if we can find our boat. And we just discovered this big old church hidden on the other side of the river. There's no road to it and the forest grows all around. What do you think that is, Henry? Is it, it wouldn't have been built like that, would it? Is it 
from something else. It was like the nose of a plane. A survival vessel. Oh my god. It's it's quite low in the water at the back, isn't it? The back's right in the water, uh, above the gunnel. Interesting. Well, I'd love to see inside that. <laughs> so that's it. We're turned. We're heading east into the sunrise, or actually a heat wave. Before we completely leave this area, there's one more place we have to go to. Take it away, Fran. So this rocky outcrop is where Robin Hood is said to be buried. He doesn't have a gravestone, but when he was ill and getting old, he went to his aunt, who was the prioress of a rather long gone priory that was near here. And in those days, I think that there wasn't hospitals and priories were places where people went to get looked after by the nuns. Anyway, she was persuaded by Sir Roger de Doncaster to kill Robin Hood and that's this she did by slowly beating him to death. Towards the end, little John came, got Robin Hood up and put a bow in his hand and he shot two arrows, one which floated off down the river and the other which landed here. So this is where little John buried him and I don't know if it's true or not but we've made the pilgrimage here and it's a rather nice spot. and we're trying to get a few miles under our belt over the next couple of weeks because there is a worry about more restrictions and canals closing and although H isn't worried because he thinks we can just leave our boat in a yard up here if, if things get dry I actually have to get in somewhere which I can't say anything about at the moment so we're shooting off towards Keepy now back on the tri tidal trend the other way and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Now that orange peel, it kind of appears to me. Why is this hanging from a cherry tree? That blossom seems so blossomy. Probably more.